The Narrow Margin, a movie from 1952, is a thrilling story set on a train journey. It's directed by Richard Flesher. The main character is a tough cop who has to protect an important witness traveling on the train for a trial. There's a lot of suspense and danger as they travel, with lots of surprises along the way. The movie has exciting moments, funny parts, and sad scenes. Each part is carefully made to keep you interested until the end. Is there a specific part of this movie that you remember well? Share your thoughts with us. Get ready for a thrilling movie experience with The Narrow Margin. It's sure to keep you entertained the whole way through. A review of The Narrow Margin skillful and entertaining, the movie is a compelling piece of filmmaking from the 1950s. Clocking in at just 70 minutes, it showcases the era's efficiency in storytelling. Set predominantly within the confines of a railroad car, it captivates with its suspenseful narrative and unexpected plot twists. Marie Windsor delivers a standout performance as a cynical and bold mob mall, adding depth to the character dynamics. Despite minimal sets and special effects, the film immerses viewers in its tense atmosphere. However, upon reflection, certain plot holes emerge, detracting from the overall experience. Questions arise regarding the plausibility of certain story elements, challenging the narrative's coherence. Additionally, a key story point concerning a major plot twist and its aftermath feels somewhat contrived and out of character. The resolution lacks emotional weight, diminishing the impact of earlier events. While the movie succeeds in delivering thrills and tension, its flaws become more apparent upon closer examination. Nevertheless, for those willing to overlook its shortcomings, it remains a noteworthy example of classic noir cinema. The narrow margin stands out for a few reasons. Firstly, it marked the last movie appearance of Jack Lane White. Secondly, it got a perfect 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes based on 11 critic reviews. Also, the film is mentioned in She Wolf in Hollywood, the story of Maria Ospenskaya, where it's noted as one of Ospenskaya's acting students' projects. These things make the movie important in the world of cinema. The Narrow Margin, directed by Richard Flesher, was filmed in 1950, but released in 1952. It was initially delayed because Howard Hughes, the owner of RKO Pictures, held on to a copy of the film in his private projection room for over a year after hearing positive reviews. The movie stars an actress who appeared in several Best Picture Academy Award winners and nominees, including It Happened One Night. You Can't Take It With You, All About Eve, The Greatest Show on Earth, and Around the World in 80 Days. She also appeared in numerous other acclaimed films throughout her career. Hughes, impressed by the narrow margin, wanted changes made after viewing it. He hired director William Cameron Menzies to shoot additional scenes and modify existing ones. One change involved removing a scene that hinted at police corruption where Gus Forbes, Brown's murdered partner, had taken a bribe. Hughes didn't want any suggestion of corruption in the film, so he ordered the scene cut. The narrow margin offers a gripping narrative with unexpected twists and turns showcasing the challenges faced by the characters as they navigate a dangerous journey. The film's suspenseful atmosphere and strong performances have earned it lasting recognition in cinematic history. The Narrow Margin, a 1952 film, features scenes of a supposed Santa Fe train journeying through the Southwest. However, stock footage often reveals a Southern Pacific Daylight Engine, which typically traveled north through California and Oregon. The movie stars Charles McGraw and Marie Windsor, who shared the screen in several other films alongside Jim Backus. Despite director Richard Flesher's prior success with tight, profitable B-pictures, the narrow margin propelled him into the league of a director's. Flesher's skillful direction and the film's tense atmosphere garnered critical acclaim, marking a significant milestone in his career. The Narrow Margin, released in 1952, stood out as Arco's most profitable film of the year. Notably, the movie is devoid of a traditional musical score, save for a few instances featuring background music from radios or phonographs. Director Richard Flesher opted for a handheld camera approach, a pioneering choice at the time. Rather than altering the sets, Flesher kept them intact and utilized the camera's mobility to convey the train's movement. This innovative technique helped create a realistic sense of motion while saving production costs. The narrow margin remains a noteworthy example of efficient filmmaking techniques that prioritize practicality and creativity. Don Haggerty holds a unique distinction as the sole actor whose name was initially misspelled on the Hollywood Walk of Fame plaque. Originally intended for Don, the chairman mistakenly engraved Dan Haggerty instead. Subsequently, Dan received his own star. Marie Windsor's breakthrough performance in The Narrow Margin catapulted her into the spotlight. Despite previous comparisons to Joan Crawford, she garnered little attention until this role. 
The hard-boiled dialogue exchanges between Charles McGraw and Marie Windsor are revered by many film noir enthusiasts as some of the genre's finest moments. Karen Burroughs Hansberry included a brief biography of McGraw in her book Bad Boys, The Actors of Film Noir. The second reporter to enter the train after it arrives in Los Angeles is portrayed by George Sawaya, who also served as Charles McGraw's stunt double during the fight on the train. This marks Sawaya's first stunt assignment, leading to further opportunities, including doubling for Jack Webb on Dragnet and Warren Beatty on Bonnie and Clyde. McGraw is perhaps best remembered by film noir fans as the detective Marilyn Monroe refers to as a big banana head in the asphalt jungle. The Narrow Margin, released in 1952, was considered a step above typical B-movies of its time, but fell short of being classified as a top tier of picture, earning the label of a nervous uh, according to TCM. Despite completing filming before Roblox, another notable film noir featuring Charles McGraw, it was released later. There was a consideration by RKO Pictures owner Howard Hughes to reshoot McGraw's scenes with Robert Mitchum to enhance the movie's appeal. Shot in just 13 days, the only segment filmed on a train was a brief arrival scene in Los Angeles. These production details shed light on the film's unique journey to the screen. Recognized as one of the 500 stars nominated by the American Film Institute for consideration as one of the 50 greatest American screen legends, the movie was acknowledged during a three-hour TV special on CBS titled F Eyes 100 Years, 100 Stars America's Greatest Screen Legends in 1999. The TV movie holds significant cultural and historical value evident from its inclusion in the National Film Registry by the Library of Congress. It joins the ranks of other esteemed films such as The Killers, Spartacus, The Birds, and In Cold Blood, selected for their cultural, historical, or aesthetic significance. The train's route follows the path of the old Santa Fe Railroad, adding depth to the setting. Interestingly, the Amtrak Southwest Chief still traverses this same route as of 2009 preserving the connection to the narrative. The TV movie's recognition and historical relevance underscore its significance in American cinema. Director Richard Flesher revealed that the owner of RKO Pictures, Howard Hughes, admired the completed film. However, Hughes had contemplated replacing actors Charles McGraw and Marie Windsor with Robert Mitchum and Jane Russell. Despite Hughes' intentions, he sold his stake in RKO before any alterations could occur. Consequently, the film remained shelved for two years until its eventual release in 1952, maintaining its original cast and content. The narrow margin showcases a suspenseful journey with unexpected twists and turns captivating audiences with its thrilling narrative. Directed by Flesher, the film offers a compelling experience that keeps viewers on the edge of their seats. Its delayed release did not diminish its impact, as it remains a classic example of noir cinema.